Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast, the podcast dedicated to simplifying the commercial real estate industry for the masses. Each week, we sit down with industry experts to dissect the many facets of commercial real estate and extract valuable lessons you can apply to your business. Whether you're a new or seasoned business owner or investor, the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast will be your go-to resource for all your commercial real estate needs. Now, here are your hosts, Rafael Collazo and Jeff Walston. Welcome to the Commercial Real Estate Academy podcast. I'm your host, Rafael Collazo, here with my co-host, Jeff Walston. How's it going, my friend? Going great, man. Uh, where are we at? Thursday uh, this week, and man, I'll tell you, it's been a busy week for business. Uh, I think... I don't think it's stopped. It's all been running together. That's why I don't even know what day it is. So how's it going on for you over there, Raphael? Good, man. Good. Business has been being good. And and now I'm starting to get into the tax mode, trying to get all my uh, documents lined up so I can file early. I like, I don't want to have to deal with waiting until April. So, you know, if I can get it done relatively early in, or in February or even, even by early March, I mean, that's kind of the goal. So, you know, just trying to get all my QuickBooks figured out and you know, get those documents that I need to in order to effectively file my taxes, because that's always great to have to deal with, uh, as, as many people that are listening, I'm sure, love dealing with taxes. Um, oh, absolutely. All right. Yeah, no, but but that, but but speaking of taxes, I mean, this 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 particular strategy that we talked about today is actually going to be one that could probably save you a significant amount. And not only that, but it's just a unique strategy to be able to think about when it comes to investing in commercial real estate, and that is infinite banking. And luckily, we had the opportunity to speak with Drew, uh, who is a gentleman that we met through our commercial real estate LinkedIn challenge uh, several months ago. And he's just an, an awesome dude, super high energy uh, individual. And we had an opportunity to talk about the infinite banking uh, strategy, which is one strategy that you could potentially incorporate into your investing uh, career within the commercial real estate space. So we got into uh, why he got interested in the insurance space before. I mean, before he actually jumped in, I think he was a pediatric nurse uh, and, you know, got his way out of debt, which was significant. He said he had $150,000 in debt when he graduated and only made like $40,000, but he was able to claw his way out of debt and then eventually started looking to real estate as an opportunity to be able to invest. And so uh, he, he kind of told us about that moment in time when he got interested in the insurance space and then talked a little bit about what infinite banking is in particular, because it's definitely a buzzword out there that a lot of people talk about, but sometimes it's a little bit opaque and difficult to understand. And then we talked a little bit through the me mechanics, as well as some of the benefits that are can be utilized by real estate investors in particular with, with this particular strategy. And then finally, uh, we talked about a little bit about if this is something that you'd be interested in, how you go through the process of, of learning more about it, and then ultimately setting up a policy for yourself to be able to do that as well. So I, I found it extremely insightful. You know, I've heard of the, uh, the infinite banking policy in the past. And to be honest, I didn't really understand it too much until, until recently. So uh, Jeff, do you have anything else you want to add? Well, I, I think if anybody that's interested, like you said, it, it was a, an insightful episode and Drew uh, definitely helped explain infinite banking and how whole life insurance and how it all works together. And I feel like if you guys uh, listen to the episode and if you're definitely curious about infinite banking and, and see the benefits of helping you, you should definitely reach out to Drew Wright. Um, and yeah, and we appreciate you guys listening to this. Oh yeah, I know for sure. And I'll kind of echo that on, on Jeff's front regarding Drew and also about thanking you guys so much for your support of the podcast. I know we say it every episode, but it really is truly amazing to see the uptick that we've seen as far as downloads are concerned. I think a big reason for that is the guy, the fact that you guys are leaving five-star reviews on our podcast. And so if you don't mind taking about five to 10 seconds, go to the Apple podcast uh, app on your, on your phone and just go leave us a five-star review. It just, you can just leave the five-star or you can potentially leave us a comment and share what you like about the podcast and maybe some of the content you'd like to see on the podcast, because we always like trying to provide as much value as we possibly can. And your feedback is greatly appreciated. So Thank you again for everything you guys do for us. And, and, and hopefully you guys enjoy this, this episode as we did. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into the show. Hey, Drew, great to see you this fine morning. Hey, guys, great to be here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks oh. for being our guest. We appreciate it. Oh, for sure. And for those of you guys who don't know, uh, we actually, I think I met Drew via the uh, LinkedIn challenge hosted by Yona Weiss. Um, yep. Awesome challenge if you ever get a chance to join. I mean, we I've been able to meet a significant amount of people and you know, several of the ones that I've met on, on via that challenge have been on the podcast. So, you know, it's just amazing the the network that can be built through LinkedIn. So uh, welcome, Drew. It's awesome to see you. 
Yeah, thank you. And I'd say kudos to you because you put out a post that said, you know, hey, we're doing this challenge together, but we need to make something of this. Let's network and get to know each other. And so, and then you, I mean, you booked a call with every single person that that put a comment in there. So uh, that was that was your idea, which I later stole on, I think, like the last day. You did. So, thank you. Uh, <laughs> no, and, and, and I'm sure I hope it worked for you because, I mean, I was surprised by the actual outreach. I mean, I was like, wow, like 10 people. I actually spoke with probably eight to 10 people. Yeah. You know, just through that one post. And it's pretty amazing. And, you know, like I said, we've, we've had a couple of them come on the podcast. And so it's amazing what can happen when you put yourself out there a bit and engage with a like-minded group of people. And so, you know, definitely, we're really, definitely. we're really excited to host you because, you know, I'm excited to kind of dive into some of these strategies pertaining to infinite banking, which we're going to be talking about a little bit. It's something that's pretty new to me. So I'm sure I'm going to have a lot of questions just out of curiosity as well. But before we yeah. dive into the, the, the actual logistics and the mechanics of, of that, that strategy. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? That's what we usually like to ask our guests when they first get started with the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm, you know, born and raised Omaha, Nebraska, Midwest guy. Um, you know, I went to school, uh, and I went to college to become a pediatric on, a nurse. I worked as a pediatric oncology nurse for 10 years, um, graduated with about 150,000 plus in student loan debt. And that I mentioned that cause that's really what, you know, kind of kickstarted my journey to be in here with you guys today. I didn't care about money, didn't know about money, um, you know, like wasn't really raised with the background with that. And so um, graduated nursing school and was like, okay, I'm, I'm 150,000 in debt and I'm making 35 to 40,000 a year. All right. These numbers don't make sense. Um, and so that kind of kickstarted me to learn. I, you know, the first person I learned about was Dave Ramsey not as big of a, a fan anymore, but, um, you know, that kind of just got my wheel spin. I started asking more questions, um, and knew pretty quickly, like, you know, I don't want to be a nurse forever. Uh, I don't want to be in debt forever and found my way to, okay, what, you know, what are wealthy people doing? Oh, they're in real estate. Right. Um, so learned about real estate. I spent some time flipping mobile homes where I provided notes on them. Um, and I still have a few of those out today and then, you know, which I know we're going to dive into, but then I found my way, you know, um, during that to the infinite banking part. And so, and then, you know, here with you guys today. That's awesome. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and I think there's a lot of people with the realization that they come to when they look at their current situation, they're say, okay, like there's gotta be something different. And I know that's kind of the realization I came to several years ago. And I'm sure Jeff, you know, Jeff is unique in that he's, he's been in the business world for quite some time too. So he sees the value of being in your own boss and, and building something for yourself as well. And you know, again, I, I'm interested to dive in to see a little bit more about this particular strategy because it's one that we've heard about a lot, but it's, it's, I feel like it's very, um, it's somewhat opaque. Like a lot of the times it's like, oh, we should, you should consider this, but um, it's kind of interesting. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I, I want to start out saying thanks for actually, uh, you know, pediatric nursing and stuff that that's, uh, I commend you for that, uh, oh. going in that and, and helping out with that. I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, and then also you were saying the infinite baking. So that's necessarily like insurance, right? Yeah. In yeah. Form? Okay. Yeah. So what, what actually got you interested in that? So you went from nursing directly to that, or was there another path? Like, can you enlighten us about that? Yeah. So, you know, I kind of mentioned like the part of the, why I mentioned the debt and the Dave Ramsey part is that I, I really developed a scarcity mindset is what happened. So I didn't understand good debt versus bad debt. Um, that same with mobile homes. Like the reason I got into flipping mobile homes is I was kind of like, Oh, I could pay 500 bucks for a mobile home. Right. Instead of getting into debt and leveraging, leveraging debt and using that wisely. Um, and so along the way, I, when I got back, when I got to zero and paid off that debt, I was like, what do wealthy people do? How, what do I do now? I don't even know what to do next. You know, I only know scarcity. I mean, I was a couponer at one point. Um, and so I was like, you know, what, what do you do? So um, I came across just this podcast while I was walking and the kids were playing at a playground about becoming your own banker or infinite banking. And I ordered the book, becoming your own banker. And in there, you know, he kind of like really breaks down what's going on and with money and behind the scenes with banking, with the fed, with wealthy people. And that's what like really opened me up to like, what are, what are these wealth principles that other people know that I don't know? Um, and so, and then, you know, I just liked his, uh, Nelson Nash, who created the book, um, his strategy is not, I mean, it's to help everyone and it's, and it's, you know, that, um, that it has a big, big purpose and mission behind it. So I, I connected with it. I knew once I got out of debt, 
I wanted to help other people with their money, but I knew financial advising wasn't maybe the right path for me. I just wasn't into it. And so as I'm like halfway through this book, I'm like, uh, I think this is, this is like what I want to do. And I, I tell my wife, I was like, I know it sounds crazy because I haven't even finished reading the book, but I'm certain like, this is what I want to do, you know? And, um, and I haven't looked back. I, I mean, I set it up for my wife and I, um, and then last year I let my nursing license expire. So I was like, all right, I'm all in. I wanted to have like that, you know, burning the ships moment. So, um, so that's kind of, you know, long-winded way of saying how I got there. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. And, and as far as the Dave Ramsey side of things, as you mentioned earlier, I mean, it, it, he does have some very good principles as far as getting out of debt is concerned. But I did also notice when I when I did listen to Dave Ramsey and I, I never was a, you know, a diehard practitioner or anything, but I always felt like, you know, he has that Papa Dave persona where it's like, you can't do that or you can't do this. And and it, yeah. it works for some people. But then there's mm-hmm. other things where it's like I feel like sometimes it stifles people's creativity and opportunity. And, and ultimately, when you're talking about building something for yourself, there's going to be risk involved and in a situation where you're trying to eliminate all risk i mean you're not going to be able to there's either risk of you not staying in a position or an, or an industry or something that you just don't like and you know mm-hmm. take the quote unquote safe route or you can take a risk and you know do something that could potentially you know change the the generation the generational you know hierarchy of your of your of your kids and so yeah. you know i yeah. think that you know, there's, there's a balancing act there. I'm sure there's some definite lessons that you can learn from, from Dave, but you know, yeah. take it, take, take, especially the debt side with a grain of salt, I would say. Yeah. There, I mean, it's like everything. There's some good and there's some bad. I think he's great at the debt part. Mm-hmm. I think maybe the next part, there's some things that maybe aren't uh, that helpful to others. Um, and, you know, and like I grew to, I grew to disagree with a few things when I learned about infinite banking, because it was like, he's really big on paying cash for everything, you know, Um, and I, and one of the big principles is that cash actually has a cost, you know? And Mm -hmm. so there were just some things that maybe I, you know, ended up disagreeing with him. However, I will say I'm grateful to him because he, he did kickstart my financial journey. If I didn't find him, I never would have like bothered reading anything about money. So I, I I, I gotta give him a shout out there. (laughs) Oh, heck yeah. No. And he's changed the lives of many, many people. And and I definitely don't want people to think that, you know, there's not any value there, but I'm glad that you were able to find him at that moment in life. And, and it, put you on the path you're currently on today. Now, as far as the infinite banking side, so it's a term that people hear, you know, out there, we've heard it before, but what exactly is infinite banking? Can you kind of highlight a little bit about what what that is? Yeah. And I'll tell you, like, there's a lot of, you know, misconceptions or confusion around it. Um, I tell people, if you can understand like, you know, credit card rewards, like you can understand infinite banking, right? Like, I don't know about you guys in your businesses. I have a, I have a credit card that I use for rewards to travel. Right. So the reason I don't pay cash is I don't get any of those benefits if I pay cash. Right. Um, And so it's the same thing. Like you use the rewards, you use the rewards credit card because there's certain benefits. So infinite banking um, you know, it's, it's, we say it's, you know, we do specifically designed whole life dividend, whole life insurance, dividend paying whole life insurance from a mutual company, mutual insurance company. And the reason we do that is there are certain benefits. And so, you know, we, and some people get, you know, like, okay, well, I'm going to use this as an investment vehicle. And it's really not, you know, that's really not what it is. It's more of, um, you're going to use it with what you're doing. So if you're doing real estate, you're going to keep investing in real estate, bring and put the money here first. So that's a real broad overview, but I'm happy to address, you know, a few more specifics as well. I mean, that, I like how you went through the broad overview, but I'm really curious of the mechanics of the whole process. Can you like, do say just maybe you know, just a quick step-by-step of you know if you're going to do infinite baking and how how someone can utilize that yeah yeah so the first you know the first step with anybody is figuring out like what are your goals what is you know what are you uh looking to do um because you know it's not it's not always one size fits all um sure. and then you know and and the main thing like in the, the group that i'm with we're, our group's called create tailwind um you know we're like really passionate about helping people can use this to create financial freedom. So we, we really consult and coach on how to, you know, create this system that's going to grow tax-free guaranteed that you can leverage and go put into say, which most of your listeners are listeners are probably in real estate, right? So, you know, put it into your real estate and continue, you know, buying cash, cash flowing assets. Right. Um, And so, so what you do, you know, the basics of it is that, you know, we would sit down, we'd work on, you know, what are your goals? Um, we're going to teach you how to use the system. 
Uh, and then, you know, from there, we can really specifically, you know, design it um, and then kind of, you know, move from there. That makes sense, okay. you know, for yeah. sure. So, so in the, in the, in the sense of, of, of the system itself, what, what it comes down to is getting a clear understanding of what your goals are. And then from there, structuring it in a way so that you can start contributing to the policy, right? Is there, is there like a breakdown as far as what the, 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 the differences between the cash value and the ultimate, you know, how, how does that, is there any, as far as mechanics that you're willing to share? If not, we can definitely see, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, so you mean like, how would you, I guess, access? It? Yeah. Yeah. How you structure it in, 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 yeah. in a situation yeah. where let's say I come to you and I say, Hey, you know, I'm interested in doing something similar. I want, I want to do a, a, a I want to incorporate, you know, infinite banking into my uh, strategy as far as, you know, utilizing this vehicle in order to now invest in other types of properties or assets or whatever else, like the, 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 once you set that up, is it, I'm assuming, is do you contribute to it? How does that work? Yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of ways to contribute. You can do monthly, you can do annually. A lot of people do annually, you get a little bit better rates for it. Um, and so what you're going to do, you know, is so, and so we say it's like a deposit into your banking system. Right. Um, but you know, for all intents and purposes, you're paying your premium every year. So you pay that and every year that's going to grow tax-free guaranteed uninterrupted compounding. Um, however, this is where the coaching comes in. We, we don't want it to sit there stagnant, right? Any money that's sitting stagnant right now, I mean, I think I just saw someone report 7.5% inflation this the year. CPI, this yeah, the CPI, yeah, the CPI, yeah. So that money, even sitting in there, I mean, yes, it's growing compounding. That's great. But you want to go put it to use outside there to do the cash flowing thing. So you would take, um, it's called a policy loan. And you take that against the cash value that you have in the insurance policy. And so there's some, you know, because it's a mutual insurance company, because, you know, we set you up right. Um, you're allowed to take a policy loan. And what's happening is they're putting a lien on the cash value in your insurance contract. And so um, you're into, and then the other great part I would say is a lot of times you go to a bank and you want your money out, right? You get all these questions, you know, um, they want to know about your dog and your cat and everything else. When you, uh, when you go to take a, take a loan from the insurance company, um, they just ask you where you want it and how quick. They don't ask what you're doing with it. There's no questions that come along with it. They don't care, right? It's one of the things that's part of your contract that you get to do. Um, so you take that loan and then you go put it to work outside there. Now, while it's working outside there, um, you know, while you're, you know, buying real estate, buying businesses, maybe buying Bitcoin, I'm not trying to say you should. Now, <laughs> <laughs> um, while you're doing that, that money, that compounding, uh, tax-free growth inside the policy can never be interrupted um, because like I said, there's a lien now on that money. So it's still there growing. Um, and that's a huge difference between if you have say money sitting aside for a deal um, in a savings account, right? Which you're probably getting 0.2% interest maybe if you're lucky. Uh, but then when you go put that to work, you've now lost any compounding going on, right? So that's one of the pros to the system is that you get both. You get the growth inside the policy, your banking system, and outside. That makes complete sense. Yeah, and and and, and one of the things we want to touch on in particular are the benefits for real estate investors in particular. So those individuals that listen to our podcast primarily in the commercial real estate space, whether they're multifamily investors, industrial, you know, office, anything really related in the commercial real estate sphere, we have a lot of people who are listening that are that operate in the space, whether they're brokers, lenders, investors, etc. So one of the things we kind of wanted to ask was how does it benefit real estate investors in particular? And I know this is kind of like a focus area for you as yeah. of the last, you know, several, several years. So I just kind of wanted to touch on, you know, some of those unique benefits that you see your clients kind of utilizing when it comes to these policies. Yeah. And that's one of the cool parts of it. I'd say is um, there are like, really there's like kind of like no limit to it. Your imagination is really like the limit. So um, there's lots of ways. So one, you know, I'll give you a few simple that I, that I see people using. Um, one is, you know, right now loans or interest rates are cheap, right? So you'd be crazy. Like some people are like, so do you take a loan and fund, you know, an entire building with it? You can, uh, but we would say fund the, fund the down payment with it, right? So go, go take whatever's in there and, you know, put that 20% or whatever you can get 10%, you know, down. Um, leverage that money from the insurance company, leverage the bank's money and go make more money with that. Right. So that's one simple way. And you're get, you're still going to get that tax-free growth inside. You're getting the growth outside of it. 
Um, another way I've seen, so one thing I've learned in doing this is that uh, wealthy people think differently about money, right? And so um, they, they do not, especially like I mentioned earlier, they don't keep any money stagnant. And so they keep money in motion. So there's a few people I've met who money that they have set aside, say for, you know, an escrow, you know, for taxes, mortgage insurance, they put it in this system, right? But then they don't just let it sit there. They actually lend it out to like flippers or something else. And, you know, they charge, you know, 18%, 20% or whatever. Um, and so there's some people who even use it, you know, just for repairs and things like that. So there's lots of different uses. I would say the most common one I see is using it for your down payment, getting a loan from the bank and leveraging both. So, yeah, that's awesome. And, and I think yeah. the, the, the important piece too, is being able to execute on opportunities quickly, because in the marketplace right now where we're very, it's just, there's no inventory, both on the, the, the residential side and commercial side, if it's investment property in particular, if you can execute quickly in, in an environment like that, you, you're a step above the competition then is going to require you to be able to do all these different, jump all the, through these hurdles that a lot of these lenders are going to require you to do. And on the lending side too, if, if correct me if I'm wrong too, but from my understanding, they, they, they count, you know, the insurance policy as part of your assets as well. So when they're looking to see if you are, you know, credible as far as your net worth is concerned, because that's a big uh, checkbox, I guess, for a lot of lenders is to try to see what the collective worth of the of the individuals involved in a deal are, so they can justify issuing these types of loans. From from my understanding, they 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 count the insurance uh, cash value when they're doing their analysis, so it makes it a little bit easier to be able to qualify for loans at, at some at some point. I don't know what percentage they allocate to it, but they do in fact do count it. So, yes, correct. Yeah, they will yeah. count. You can even use it as collateral if you, you know, if you want to, um, you know, and, but the, the, you know, and the nice thing is that uh, I would also say it doesn't actually get reported any of it as income or anything like that. Um, you know, any money in your bank, you know, it gets reported to the IRS, what you have in there. It doesn't work that way with these insurance contracts or private companies. Um, so they don't, they don't report that I would say to IRS or any, anybody else, but yes, you can count that when you're, you know, talking with the bank and everything. You're correct. That's awesome. Yeah. So if someone was actually interested in a funding a policy, what are some of the steps that you would like actually recommend uh, they take uh, to have all their ducks in a row per se? Yeah, great question. Um, so obviously you can meet with someone like me and I'm great to meet with, um, but no, um, <laughs> you want to, you want to, you want to meet with someone. Um, I would say definitely who is gone through like the right certifications for this. There's uh, I actually have a buddy who, you know, he had a financial advisor call him up and was, you know, telling him like, oh, I know about whole life. I know how to set this up. Uh, and then he started talking to me and was like, yeah, that, that's not exactly how he's going to set it up. And I said, well, can you use the money right away? And he's like, no, he said, I can't use it for like five years. I was like, nope. And I have a lot of clients who come to me with that. So you want to, so I say that because you really want to make sure it's someone who understands infinite banking. So, you know, there's uh, Nelson Nash Institute, someone maybe who's certified there. Um, yes, I happen to be certified there, but I'm not, I'm not saying you have to meet with me. <laughs> uh, but, but definitely meet with someone who knows infinite banking and also a huge one for me when I was doing this. Um, I would say, make sure you're going with someone who does this themselves, who practices it. Uh, you don't want someone who just says, I know the theory, right? You want someone who's like, this is what I do you know, with my own money because I believe in it so much. I think that's huge. Um, they need to be set up with a mutual insurance company. There's really only a handful that we work with because they're infinite banking friendly. Um, there are multitudes of mutual insurance companies, but not some of them penalize um, insurance agents if you take a loan. So some some places you don't really want to have the money there because you know your your person that sets you up isn't going to want you to take a loan, which is the whole point of it, right? So you want to make sure you're set up with a mutual insurance company. Um, the other thing I would say and I kind of mentioned this earlier, is that the person you're working with, you know, knows your goals, knows the plans you have in mind and can coach you on setting this up. So like, you know, we, like we actually tell people that like our relationship really begins once we set that up for you um, because we're going to coach you on how to use it well. And there's that, there's some other tax strategies that you can do, you know, where you set up a loan between yourself and your LLC and you can get some tax advantages that way. And so, because we have so many people doing this, we can kind of 
structure it that way. So you just want to make sure it's someone who has done it, knows what they're doing, and really make sure it's a mutual insurance company and really make sure that you can take a loan against that right away. If they tell you you can't take a loan, uh, you're not in the right product. And I also would say it does need to be specifically designed whole life where you're over overfunding at the start. Um, so not like an index universal type situation. For sure. That's great advice. And and I really like the the idea of, of utilizing someone who actually, you know, d- uses the product. I mean, because I, yeah. I can't tell you the difference that I've had with investors when I tell them that I, in fact, invest in real estate too, you know, as a broker. I mean, it makes a huge difference when you come at from an owner's perspective and say, okay, well, this is what I did in the past. This is how I utilize what I'm doing. And maybe this can apply to you. And just having the 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 the, the trust from those other other individuals, knowing that you, in fact, are also drinking the your own Kool-Aid is, is, is immensely helpful, you know? So yeah. I, I, I yeah. love that piece of advice. That was huge when I joined the, um, the group. They were like, okay, you know, great. You want to teach this. Uh, how are you using your policy? How are you using your system? And I was like, I'm glad you asked me that. <laughs> so yeah. um, I really appreciate that. And that's something that, you know, I think is huge. Yeah. And, and anytime I have someone that, you know, is trying to set a friend up with this, I'm like, ask them if they use it, ask them if they do it. You know, that's a really huge key. Oh, for that's sure. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's, it's one of the reasons why I ultimately joined the brokerage I did because the people that were in the brokerage invested. And it's like, oh, okay. Like they understand the reasoning behind why you're doing what you're doing, because it's great to earn an, an income, right? I think everyone yeah. wants to have an income that they can rely on to be able to cover whatever. But all, ultimately the goal is to have some form of passive or at least some income outside of you actively working in it. And so being around people who in fact are utilizing whatever the product you decide to, to pursue is, in my opinion, is going to benefit you immensely long-term because it's just a different level of understanding and and insights that they can provide. So, yeah, totally. That's awesome, man. So one thing I wanted to ask you after once people, you know, are, are kind of germinating on the idea of, of infinite banking, what are some of the resources out there that you would recommend that they check out to better inform themselves about the product? And all, all obviously reaching out to you is, is part of that strategy, but also if they have any other, you know, resources that you found extremely helpful and you think they do a great job of kind of explaining everything, I think that'd be great. I mean, just reach out to me. That's it. That's it. There's nothing yeah. else. <laughs> There's nothing uh, else. <laughs> yeah. No. So I mentioned it, but becoming your own banker, the book, um, that's what opened my eyes to it. That's a, you know, a big one. Um, there's another book called the case for IBC. They're very short reads. Becoming your own banker is kind of funny. It looks like a workbook a little bit. Um, but those are, those are huge. And, um, becoming your own banker is by Nelson Nash, who came up with the idea in a very desperate situation. Um, it was back when like, you know, most people don't remember this and I don't remember it, but like interest rates were like 18%. Um, and he was like in a dire situation, um, you know, middle of the night, hand like down on his hands and knees praying like, God, what do I do? I'm underwater here. And he remembered that he bought this whole life insurance contract just from his brother to be nice, <laughs> you know, and then that kind of like ignited everything. So that's a huge one. Um, we also have a community that we've created um, at Create Tailwind. And so it's, you know, community.createtailwind.com. Um, and inside there is a, the Becoming Your Own Banker course that I can, um, I can give people limited access to, to take that course if they wanna learn more about it. Um, and that's, you know, and that was created by Jim Oliver who was a student of Nelson Nash for years and he's been doing this for, you know, 30 years. So there's, you know, those are two great resources. Um, and I'm happy to share anything else with others if they wanna email me or ask questions about it as well. Absolutely. I I like how you're recommending books. And speaking of that, uh, we always ask our guests uh, on the podcast who and what if they what author and what book um, that it could be any part of your life that was like impactful to you that maybe changed your trajectory of your career path or and it and it doesn't have to pertain to infinite banking. So, okay, yeah, Yeah. Uh, I have a couple I'll I'll try to narrow down here. Uh, I, one is actually, and it's, it's maybe not for the reason that you think, but it's the Bitcoin standard. Um, and it's incredibly boring when you look at the book and I, a friend gifted it to me. And I was like, it was like, I remember this, like we're at coffee and he gives me his book and I'm like, I have to read this now. This looks horrible. (laughs) I was not into Bitcoin, by the way. I thought it was dumb. Um, I thought he was crazy for being into it, but why I highly recommend it is not just, you know, to get people into Bitcoin or anything like that. It's really like he goes through like the history of money and he makes it interesting. It's not boring, I promise. 
uh, the history of money, understanding the banking system, understanding the Fed, um, and, and all of these things that have happened throughout history that have to do with money and what happens when government's involved with money. And that, I mean, I've never in my life had a book where I did like a total 180 shift on something. Um, and it, and it, if I hadn't read that, I told my friend, if I hadn't read that, I would not have actually been open when I read Becoming Your Own Banker. And so it really opened me up. Um, I will give one other book because it's you know more recent and it's not financial. Uh, the book, How to Decide by Annie Duke. Um, she is a former po professional poker player. And I oh, wow. struggle with analysis paralysis, like big time. And, uh, and so I was like, how to decide? Yeah, that seems like a book I should read. Yeah. And it's been, I mean, incredible. Like the, the, she gives you ways to speed up when you make slow decisions. Um, you know, and like she talks about like thinking about, you know, quitting is underrated, basically like the cost of quitting. You should think about like, what's the cost of quitting this, you know, this decision, if it's low, she's like, just speed up and do it. If it's a high cost of quitting, well, then think a little bit more about it. And that's helped me a bunch this year. Cause I've already had a few things where I was like, should I do this? Should I not? And then I thought, what's the cost of quitting? Oh, it's low. Okay. I'll just try it. You know, let's see what happens. Uh, and so that I, I highly recommend it. I just finished it. It's kind of like a book and a workbook, but it was phenomenal. That's awesome. Yeah. I've never read that book and I'm, I'm going to add it to the list because that seems like a book that could be very beneficial yeah. and regardless of what you do. And then, you know, the Bitcoin standard, I have a, a good buddy of mine and, you know, Jeff has met him too, Luke Neubauer, who's a, a buddy that we, I run a meetup with locally. He gave me the Bitcoin standard as a book. And so I've actually been reading through it. I'm like at the, I'm at the point now where they're, you know, explaining the monetary system and how it's, yeah. cause it, it explains like how money's been used over time and what, what the characteristics of money are and how it's, you know, Bitcoin in, its, in itself mimics some of those characteristics. And at some point it could potentially hit that inflection point. And so it's kind of an interesting read. I'm, I'm not all the way through it yet, but it seems like a very, very uh, uh, profound book for sure. And it looks boring on the cover, right? I mean, it doesn't yeah. look. Boring. Well, he's, he's written a couple more books, right? He has like the Fiat standard now yeah. and he has got some other, he has another book or something. Maybe not. Maybe the, just those yeah. two. Yeah. Uh, but I, I haven't yeah. read the Fiat standard. It's sitting over here on my bookshelf, but yeah. That's awesome, man. Yeah. So, well, Drew, I greatly appreciate you coming on the podcast. Uh, it's really been fun talking to you. And, you know, we've gone, been going back and forth. Drew's actually involved in a, in a group that I'm a part of, too. It's called F3, which is like a, a exercise group that meets every morning. We do outdoor workouts, even when it's like frigidly cold outside. Yeah. Yeah. It's become somewhat like a, a like, not necessarily a cult, but it's fun because we all go out there and everyone's like kind of complaining about being out there, but we just get out there and do it. Yeah. And we, we have a yeah. fun while we're doing it too. So uh, it's been really great to, to ha have an opportunity to talk to you. One thing that we do ask at the end of our podcast is to contribute something to the CR treasure chest. Essentially what this is, is a repository of resources that we make available to our audience. And we usually our guests contribute something like, you know, helpful PDF or Excel sheet or something along those lines. I don't know if you have something in particular you'd like to contribute. Yeah. So I'll share my email. That way I can give people, I can actually give longer access to that course I mentioned, mm -hmm. the Becoming Your Own Banker course, because um, it's typically around like 14 days. I can give more than that. Um, so it's Drew White, um, D-R-E-W, the color white, at create tailwind with a D at the end.com. I'm sure you guys will put the links in the show, but uh, Drew White at create tailwind.com. You know, and even if you just do the subject line of like course or BYOB course, which stands for Becoming Your Own Banker, uh, <laughs> and I'll get you access and you can mention the show and uh, that way I know, and I can give you, I can give you longer access than just the standard 14 days that we do. That's awesome. No, I, yeah. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people who gain value from that. So like, like, like Drew was saying, we're actually going to include his email, uh, and also his LinkedIn page and various other websites in the description below. So if you guys are listening to this in a podcast format, it's going to be in the description. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the YouTube description. So. Yeah, true. I really appreciate you coming on, man. Is there any other ways that you'd like someone to reach out to you and they want to chat with you besides LinkedIn and email that you want to direct them towards or? Is yeah, that no, that's, that's great. If they do the okay. email, then just, and, and, and I will say too, if people want to have a call and discuss this, obviously I'll hop on a call. Um, and, and I've told people on shows before too, like if you have a policy out there and you want to know, like, can I use this for infinite banking? How can I use it? I help people all the time, even if I, I don't get anything from it, you know, I, I'll, I'll definitely look at it and tell you what you got and be and shoot straight with you. So yeah, definitely email and I'm happy to do phone calls and whatever to help people. Perfect. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to tell everyone, uh, definitely get on LinkedIn. Drew does some uh, great things on, on there. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to check him out on there. So yeah, LinkedIn. Yeah. Drew White on LinkedIn. Oh, I try sure. to keep it interesting sometimes. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. And and if you could for these guys who listen to this in a podcast format, Drew is wearing a Hawaiian shirt, which is, you know, yeah. I think it's awesome that he does it. And, you know, yeah. he's he's got a great personality. And I and I'd highly encourage you guys to reach out to him and uh see what what it's all about. So Again, thank you so much, Drew. We greatly appreciate your time. If you guys are watching this in a, or listening to this in a podcast format, whether that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, we would greatly appreciate it if you leave a five-star review. We've seen a significant uptick in our downloads, like 100% increases in our downloads as a result of you guys engaging with the podcast and leaving five-star reviews. So if you don't mind taking a few seconds right now to just go and leave us a five-star review, that would be awesome. If you guys are watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and ensures more and more people can hear this message and learn about the many facets of commercial real estate. So thanks again for tuning in and we'll see you all next time. Oh, 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 oh,